everybody, Dr. Doyle here. Today I am going to introduce the rational method. Before I get into the rational method, I just kind of want to review what we did in our last module when we talked about determining peak flows using probability. So we have this flow chart here um, that shows the different ways to talk about hydrographs. Remember, this is all about hydrographs. Um, and we first did the stream flow uh, measure analysis using peak stream flow, um, using a flood frequency analysis, which allowed us to get to our design floods, right? We could find 10 year, 25 year, 100 year floods. And now we're gonna look a little bit more closely at um, the hydrograph. And in particular, we're gonna start with determining that peak flow of the hydrograph using the rational method. And then we'll move on to determining not just the peak flow, but how long from the time it starts raining until that peak flow occurs, so the time to peak. Uh, so that's where we've been and where we're heading. We're still just talking about hydrographs and using them to help us to um, think about flood flows and any type of infrastructure that we need to consider as water resource engineers. Okay, so what is the rational method? The method is used for peak flows. So this method is appropriate for peak flows for small drainage areas. And so usually this is on the order of anything less than 200 acres. And we really also consider the uh, rational method for basins without storage. And so what does this look like? I'm going to draw an S approximation and just of a watershed, a small watershed with an area less than 200 acres. It's going to have some Q out and some mechanisms for drainage. And we are going to make an assumption that for some particular design storm, our intensity of rainfall is going to be constant. It's going to be constant for the duration of the storm as well as for over the entire area. And so we're going to go back here to um, our conservation of mass equation from the beginning of the quarter. And we're going to have the inflow minus the outflow is delta S over delta T, but we're making this assumption that there's no storage. And so we um, can set that equal to zero. What is our, let me hand this out some area A. Um, our inflow is just the intensity times the area. And then our Q is our outflow. This is going to be equal to zero. So we can solve for Q is equal to the intensity times the area. So that would be a perfect world if all that fell as rain um, made it to the outflow, but we know enough already by this point in our study of water resources that this is not true and that we need to account for some losses. So what about our losses? We are going to account for our losses by introducing a uh, coefficient, which we'll call C. And so our equation for the rational method becomes Q is equal to CIA. Okay, so this is our rational equation and uh, rational method equation, and now we really just need to look at each term. Uh, and remember, this is really important that this is for peak flow. All right, so our A is area. This is usually measured in acres, and this is just a measured quantity. 
of your basin or watershed or whatever you're trying to uh, design the peak flow for. Um, okay, next we'll talk about C. This is a what is called a runoff coefficient. And this runoff coefficient is unitless. And we are going to look up our runoff coefficients from a table similar to this one. And just like when we looked at infiltration using the curve number method, this is going to, these are really going to be a function of the land use in the basin. We'll talk about C here in another minute. And then lastly, we have I, which is our intensity. This is going to be measured in inches per hour, for example. And our intensity, we're going to talk, break this down a little bit more, but this is going to come from our IDF curve. Don't you love it when something comes back again in a class? Okay, so A area, pretty easy. We can just know that that's the area. So we're gonna look a little more deeply here at C, the runoff coefficient, and I, the intensity. So let's start with our C values. I'm gonna move to this section of the board. Okay, so C, our C values for the rational method. When we think about our C values, we're going to think about two different types of land use. Um, first, if we have a situation with a flat slope, so a pretty imagine like a flat parking lot or the lot that your house is on pretty flat, um, then we have a small percentage of the rainfall. become runoff. Okay, so in that case, we would expect to have a small C value. On the other hand, if we have a steep slope, then we are going to have a large percentage of our rainfall becoming runoff. And we will have a large C. Okay. So Again, here's some examples. I'll show a table here that shows some C values for you. Um, and what you might notice with those C values is that in your city where you have a lot of asphalt, um, you're gonna have a C value of about 0.7 to 0.9. Um, so a lot of that rain is going to become runoff. On the other hand, if you have a lawn um, with sandy soil and it's pretty flat, like less than two degrees of a slope, then your C is 0.05 to 0.1. So what does that suggest? Only five to 10% of your rainfall makes it to runoff. So there's a big difference between what's happening in a city or in um, asphalt um, parking lots and the um, lawn, right? So again, we can keep this in mind as water resource engineers so that we can try and um, figure out how to reduce that peak, peak discharge. We can use this if we have the situation where we might have multiple land uses. Similarly to what we did with the curve number, we can calculate a composite coefficient and it's going to be equal to 
the sum of each coefficient for the area of land that it represents divided by the total area. Okay. The last thing we need to talk about and introduce a little bit is how to determine, I'm just gonna cross that out. How are we going to determine I? As I mentioned previously, this I is the intensity from the IDF curve. So if given an IDF curve, what do we need to know? We need to know, uh, we're trying to find the intensity from it, so we need to be given a duration and a frequency. So the frequency is going to be determined, so IDF, intensity, duration, frequency. This intensity is what we're looking for, what we're trying to find in order to use it in the rational method. The duration um, we are going to determine, and I'll talk about that in a minute. This is some time to use, right? And the frequency is um, dictated by what, what are you designing? What are the regulations for what you're designing? Um, this is gonna be, are, are you looking to design for a two year storm or a five year storm? Uh, that's gonna be in the um, regulations of whatever you're designing. Okay, so the frequency um, will be given to you or you get to decide what frequency you're designing for. The intensity is what you're trying to look up and so we gotta talk about the duration. The duration that we use is the time of concentration. And what is the time of concentration? We call this T for T. This is the time for water to flow from the most hydrologically, hydraulically remote area of the basin to the basin's outlet. Okay, I like to think about my sink when I think about the time of concentration. I have this sink, my sink happens to have its drain over on the right hand side. And sometime at the end of, um, you know, when I'm done washing the dishes, which by the way, I never do, clearly my husband does all the dishwashing in the house. Um, we take the sprayer and we spray the entire sink, right? And so my time of concentration is gonna be how long does it take the drop of water that I um, put here to flow to my outlet, okay? Does it go like this and then like this? Or does it go like this, right? So it's just evaluating how long it'll take for that droplet to make it to my drain. So next time you do the dishes or send someone else to do the dishes, take a look at the way the water is um, moving towards the drain and see if you can find the most hydro, hydrologic, hydraulically remote spot. Now, one other thing to consider is that when you're looking for your duration or your time of concentration, remember back to our IDF curves that we really want to look at the shortest time possible because that's going to actually lead to a higher intensity when we look at it in terms of inches per hour. 
is going to give us a safety of factor of safety built in. Okay, that was not right. Uh, factor of safety built in. See, it's hard to, to talk and write at the same time. Okay. Um, when we look at determining the duration, we often can write this equation as TC, the time of concentration, is equal to TO plus TF, where this is the flow time in pipe. And then this is sort of our overland, let me write it as overland flow. Man. Okay, so if I think back to my sink example, the overland flow is gonna be that flow that's on the surface that we can see. But what happens to um, my water once it goes down my drain? Well, now it's in a pipe, and so I can actually calculate how long it takes to get from here to where it joins the main line of, um, I'm looking that way because my street is that way, and <laughs> the main line of our um, sewer system. And then I can get a time of concentration if I use that as my outlet, okay? Um, you can do the same then for all my bathroom sinks, and we can get into that. Um, okay, so TO, that's our overland flow. It's the longest time of water. We're gonna talk a little bit about sheet flow and shallow concentrated flow. Uh, well, we will get into that as we move into um, our examples, but just to see really quickly, this, this table that I pop up will show you how you can calculate the overland flow for different scenarios using different equations. Some of these you probably will recognize um, from your fluids class, and that some of them are really quite theoretical or empirical. So it really just depends on the scenario that you are dealing with. But we will practice this with some examples the next time that we are together. Okay. So there's your rational method. You may have seen this before if you've done any municipal engineering. Um, so yeah, all right.